Hello and welcome to Ignite with Mwangala with me Mwangala Chakalashi Santos. Now remember this is a show where we bring stories that are meant to leave a lasting and positive impact on your lives. These are stories that are told by real people with real stories. I'm joined by such an amazing woman. She is the first female that was awarded the rank of Brigadier General in the Zambian Army. She is no other than General Puta. General, welcome to Ignite with Mwangada. Thank you very much. I'm so honored to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Now, General, the society has defined how far women can go, or what women can do and what women cannot do. Mm -hmm. How did you end up as a general? Oh, well, it wasn't easy. Ah. Um, let me just mention the fact that I was in the first intake of the lady officer cadets because there were no females in the army. So in 1974, 75, we were recruited. And being the first, the very first, we had to wear uh, trousers tailored for men and you know what that means. So mm. they weren't fitting very, very well. Even shoes, we wore men's shoes until much, much later. But the acceptance was rather difficult. We weren't really accepted in the beginning because the barracks wasn't meant for, for female women, yeah. officers. Mm -hmm. Yes, so there was a lot of adjustments to do. And then we were also categorized not to be combatants. In that sense, none of us uh, could join, say, the artillery, the engineers, the armored brigades or armored regiments, we were all placed in administrative uh, calls, like the pay call, where you have to do accounting, and the medical call, the catering, and the ordinance call. So none of us was in combatant battalions. Mm. But I'm glad that now we do have females on the tanks, we have females even fighter pilots. We have females in uh, uh, all these other cause which were male dominated. Mm. Yeah. What inspired you to join the army? Because I mean, not not a lot of people would want to join the army. What was that one thing that led you to to join the army? I think there was a boy in me, in the sense that I used to hang around more mm. with my elder brother because I thought his life was more exciting. They would go to the bush and uh, steal candolo and make uvon. Uh -huh. I think from our generation, they know what I'm talking about. They, yeah. they used to go in the bush, collect uh, fruits, and mom would not tolerate me because she thought I was crazy. How, <laughs> how, how do I hang around with boys? So I was more of a tomboy. Yeah. And, um, but I would do household chores, mm. but not as good as my sister who was always just doing that. But I was running around and I was very athletic. So I needed something that was physical, mm -hmm. but also using my brains. So when I heard that the army was recruiting, I just said, yes, this, this is, is what I want to do. Yeah. And I joined. It just resonated with you. Absolutely. You've talked about being a boy in you. Is mm -hmm. that boy still there? He is there. <laughs> I like that. And well, he has just come out. Like, he is there. Yes, alive and well. So what is he doing now? Now, right now, uh. this boy is um, uh, a proprietor of the Active Fitness Center uh. in partnership with uh, Bruce. And uh, we are running that gym. And this boy is also uh, an adjunct faculty member with the Africa Center for Strategic Studies since 2006. Mm -hmm. So I'm often invited at the National Defense University in Washington to do a lot of programs mm -hmm. concerning the African military and security leadership. So we do run courses mm -hmm. and uh, we do uh, also carry out programs within Africa. The very last one was the um, one in Addis Ababa in February, where the uh, land forces commanders were meeting. Mm -hmm. Last year we were in, uh, in Botswana. So I'm still connected to the Africa Center and I'm still connected to the military, mm -hmm. especially the uh, American military. But I'm also mingling a lot with the African military leaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the military in you is still there? 
alive and well. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about some of the challenges that you faced. I know it's so hard for women out there to climb the ladders. How was that journey for you? Well, um, for me, I, I, I kind of ignored the negative vibe that was coming from, from the leadership. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was also labeled too ambitious. This girl is very ambitious. Are you? I still am. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So I, I was labeled, she's too ambitious, yeah. she's too ambitious, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And even when um, we were challenging the fact that serving officers should not marry another serving officer. Mm -hmm. But this um, happened with a, a ZAF officer whose wife was requested to leave the Air Force because she was married to this officer. Mm -hmm. and, and I spoke openly about it. But she lost that job. This mm -hmm. time she would have risen even up to Brigadier General. Mm -hmm. But the husband did rise, no names, the husband did rise up to Brigadier General, mm -hmm. but her military career was cut. Mm -hmm. But after that case, now they are free to marry. Wow. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about your personal life, but before we talk about your personal life, let's talk about these ranks. You're not the Brigadier General, Lieutenant General. Mm -hmm. just, just take us through those ranks so that people understand when we say we are talking to the Brigadier General uh, Puta, so okay. that they know what, what we're talking about. Okay, in the military there are two categories mm. uh, of um, enlistment. One is the non-commissioned and the non-commissioned starts from a private soldier, uh, goes through the ranks uh, to lance corporal, full corporal, uh, sergeant, staff sergeant, warrant officer class one and warrant officer class, I'm sorry, warrant officer class two and warrant officer class one is the highest. Mm -hmm. And then the officer corps comprises of, of course you start as an officer cadet, and then you go through second lieutenant, that's one peep. Mm -hmm. And then you have two peeps, which is a lieutenant. And then captain, three. And then major with an eagle. Mm -hmm. a lieutenant colonel, an eagle with a peep. Uh, full colonel, you have uh, an eagle with two peeps. And brig gen, you have an eagle with three peeps. And then you move on to a major general, where you, you have um, I don't know how to describe it, and then mm -hmm. up to uh, Lieutenant General and General, four star general. Mm, what's the highest? Uh, field Marshal. Field we, we've Marshal. We've never had a Field Marshal in Zambia, okay. but we've had full generals like uh, General Chinkuli, who was the first uh, indigenous Zambian army commander. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm looking at this man in you and I'm thinking, wow, let's talk about her personal life. Was, was he married? Yes, he yeah. was. <laughs> he was. I yeah. was married to uh, Colonel Christopher Putab. Okay. He's late now. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, uh, I've never been married after that. I've never remarried. But I'm comfortably uh, looking after and living with my family. Mm. I had to look after so many orphans. You know, when the HIV AIDS hit Zambia, or let me say Africa, apparently uh, my uh, siblings, some of my siblings, three of them, were infected and died of the virus and left so many children. At one point I had 11 children. I looked after them with my God. Mm. That's all I can say. He was there to provide for each and every one of them. Yeah. Yes, and um, they are now all independent. Mm -hmm. All of them are independent. And uh, besides taking care of this big family, I was also taking care of my military career and my other uh, programs that I needed to attain for me to rise. Mm. So I was, I was quite busy, and I'm still quite busy. Mm. Yeah. Okay. If you're joining us now, I am talking to General Puta, who was the first female to have been awarded the rank of Brigadier General. I like how she calls it, Brig Gen. That's how you call it. Is that how I? I well, that's it? abbreviated. Oh, abbreviated. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, 
you were married, you had a husband, both working in the army. Mm -hmm. No, he was in the Air Force. Also, he, but you were still under you military. Know, military, yeah, of we're course. Both military. How were you able to, to separate or rather differentiate you as a wife at home and you as a general at work? Well, a wife will always be a wife, ah. and uh, you never mix the two. Yeah. Yeah. You, you leave your rank where you work. Mm. And then you leave your house with free where you live. Was that easy? Because yeah, very easy. I know that men and women in uniform have these instincts, you know. Whenever something goes wrong, they immediately want to go into this mode of correction. Was that easy at home? Yes, it was. Uh. To some extent it was. I don't think we faced any problems with our ranks. Yeah. Well, of course, he was a lot senior than mm. me. And... Uh, I, I never saluted him in the house, but <laughs> when you're outside and were, the other people were you watching. supposed to salute? <laughs> <laughs> so, no. but outside you still salute him. Yes, especially despite when despite him being your husband. Yes, you respect the rank, not the wow. the person. It's the rank that really mattered. Oh, that's and fine. you're also showing an example of yeah. uh, how you treat people who are senior to you. Mm. Yeah. Powerful. Mm. Now, um, you've talked about HIV, and I know you're doing a lot of work around HIV and AIDS. Perception out there is that uh, men and women in uniform tend to be very careless when it comes to their personal lives. Is that true? Well, I wouldn't say really uh, careless. And even if they were careless, they are mingling with civilians. So even the mm. civilians are also careless. But maybe what makes them more vulnerable is the fact that, especially when we were being deployed in, uh, uh, for operations and places like that for long hours, I mean for long times, especially during the liberation struggle, mm. yeah, troops would be deployed for a long time away from home. What do you expect? They are only human. And they would mingle with the locals wherever they are mm -hmm. and they were considered as vectors of the virus yeah. because they were highly mobile. They would go home, take it home or take it from home mm -hmm. to wherever. Yeah. Yeah. Was so, that the same for, for, for women? Because uh, well we, we are told that women can go for a long time, you know, they just kind of switch off. For men, it's very difficult, really, for them to go away from home for such a long time mm -hmm. and not be able to indulge. Was that the same for women? Well, I wouldn't say was it. I think men and women are the same people. Oh. I mean, they are human. Yeah. They are the same. And it also depends on uh, one's belief mm. and trust. If you fear the Lord, it doesn't matter whether you are male or female. Mm. If you are having illicit sex, you are male, you are female, you don't fear the Lord. But when you have the Lord in you, you definitely respect your marriage bed, you also respect your body. Mm. Yeah, so the military has always been labeled like they're the ones that are transmitting, they go for peacekeeping missions, and oftentimes you find that where there is a military cantonment deployed in a remote area, that's like the source of livelihood for the uh, local population. Yeah. For instance, in the UN, wherever there is a UN mission, you do expect a lot of people like crowding where the UN uh, mission is. Um, and I would give an example of, because um, I served in East Timor mm -hmm. for 18 months. As a civilian, I was seconded to the UN. As a civilian, and I was the HIV AIDS policy advisor. I actually am the one who promulgated the HIV AIDS policy in peacekeeping missions. I set up one in Timor and then UN headquarters said let's, uh, let's replicate this to every mission in, in the world. Mm -hmm. And then after Timor I went to uh, Liberia where mm -hmm. I served for three years and nine months in the same capacity as HIV AIDS policy advisor to the SRSG. Fantastic. Now I want you to hold that thought mm -hmm. because when we come back I'd like, us, I'd like you to take us through some of the works that you've done around HIV and AIDS and of course some of the challenges that you have faced as a woman. Mm -hmm. We take a short break and we'll be right back.
To advertise on this program and enjoy amazing introductory rates, please call us on plus 260-211-290959 or plus 260-211-290912 or plus 260-953-538-000. Or send us an email at loyolazam at gmail.com. Welcome back. If you're joining us now, I am talking to General Puta from the Zambian Army. Well, a retired general, but still a general, right? Yes. Okay, so once a general, always a general. Always one. Who? Oh, you go with the title. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Now, we, before we went on break, we were talking about some of the works that you've been involved with around HIV and AIDS. Just take us through. And what motivated you to start doing what you're doing now? I was hit below the belt mm. when I lost my siblings. And I felt the impact of looking after children whose parents are gone. And I also felt the pain and I declared war against HIV. Uh-huh. To an extent that, on the red ribbon, I designed a Klashnikov over the red ribbon yeah. so that I fight it like I'm fighting the real war. Mm. Yes. That's what motivated me. And then also in the military, I noticed that the flag, especially the battalion flag, was almost always at half mast. There was a soldier who was in minor circle because I was the um, senior, uh, I was the nursing services manager at minor mm-hmm. circle. There was a soldier who has died. There's a soldier who was being buried. Uh, people coming from a burial place. Always, it would go on and on for almost three months. Mm-hmm. Flag at half mast, which means we are in mourning. And the band, the military band, was almost always at the cemetery. Yeah. Maybe they would the go day. and play there. They would go and play on that one, play on that one. So I, I, was, I was affected. My family had impacted me a lot. And also the troops and the officers that I had worked with. Yeah. You lose this one. You lo- and we were losing them in their heydays. Peak yeah. times, yeah. Yes. Mm. They left spouses, they left children. So I just said, I'm going to contribute Mm -hmm. to fighting this scourge. The army knew just kicked in and said, I'm going to fight this fight. And thank God, I was appointed HIV AIDS coordinator for the Zambia Defense Force. So I was coordinating this program in the army, in the air force, and in the national service. And then every service had a focal point yeah. who we were working with. And uh, we developed a lot of programs, educational, uh, care and support, as well as voluntary counseling and testing. When it was just being introduced, of course, we met a lot of resistance. Mm-hmm. But by God's grace, we had a breakthrough. Yeah. And Meaning now you won. Yes, we won. We won the war. Yeah. And now the cases are very low. Yeah. Those that are infected are living positively, yeah. majority of them. And then with the advent of the antiretroviral drugs, and thank God to the scientists and also the donor community mm. that has helped us, especially the PEPFAR fund, which has helped us fight this HIV program. Fantastic. Mm. Now let's talk about some of the challenges that you've faced as a woman. Mm-hmm. Obviously, not to leave out um, sexual harassment, especially in places of work. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm sitting here and I'm imagining: Do men, or rather women in uniform, do they go through some of the sexual harassment that corporate space goes through? It's the same everywhere. It's the same everywhere. But it also is dependent mm. on you, the woman. Yeah. What message are you sending? How are you dressed? How do you sit? How do you carry yourself? What are you talking about? Yeah. And men pick that. Because mm. if I'm going to talk about getting born again, yeah. knowing Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, who's got the guts? To come close to you. To come close to me and talk to me about... Uh, there are men that are courageous, you know. 
they, they, don't, they don't care whether you're talking about yeah, those who don't care <laughs> came yeah and some of them were led to the lord <laughs> that's powerful yes so they came to persuade you and Try. you saw it fit to say now it was an opportunity for evangelism yeah. Uh, it was an opportunity for evangelism, and this is what I would urge all the women. Yeah. If you are born again, you love Christ, and you want to send the word of Christ to everyone, use it as an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them, this body is not to be defiled by anybody. I love that. Uh, that's powerful. You are not my husband. I'm not your wife. Yeah. Sex is out. Mm. You are married. Stick to your faithful partner. And talk about defilement of your body, talk about HIV, mm -hmm. and talk about pregnancies, unwanted pregnancies. Don't bring all these complications to your life. Mm. Just be where you are. Yeah. Do I look like a sex machine? Hell no. Mm. So you ain't gonna touch me? At all. I like that. <laughs> now let's talk about some of the challenges that you face. Of course, now it's very clear that was not a challenge for you. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't. Yeah. But what, what are some of the challenges that today if you look back and say, oh wow, that was a challenge, but I won. Um, maybe I'll talk about my life in the uh, mission, mm -hmm. peacekeeping mission. The biggest challenge I faced was talking to men from the East. Yeah. The Pakistanis, the Indians, the mm -hmm. Chinese, and, because for them it was taboo for a woman to stand in front there and tell them how to use a condom and demonstrate and talk about what sex can do. Mm. It can break you, yeah. depending on who you are having sex with. Mm. Stick to your faithful partner, don't go to these uh, local populations, stay with yourself and blah, blah, blah. And you can't die if you haven't had sex. I've never heard of cause of death, lack of sex. <laughs> so I'll talk to them, yeah. say the Pakistanis and the, the very first They'll time. They all look down. Like yeah, <laughs> they would look down. But afterwards, they got used. Yeah. They got used and uh, we would flow very well. And mm. I made very close uh, partnerships with... Um, the mission doctors yeah. from all these uh, troop contributing countries mm -hmm. and I think that was the biggest challenge. Okay. Yeah, that was the biggest challenge. 37 years yes. of being in the military, that was a rich, or rather that's a rich CV. What are some of the lessons that you've learned? 37 I years, was I still? No, I think I, I, You're I not was, born yet? No, 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 no. I'm not going to know my age. <laughs> but yeah, what, what are some of the lessons that you learned? Mm. Well, the, the, I think the biggest lesson I've learned yeah. is the fear of the Lord. Mm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. I wasn't born again when I joined the army, mm. but I got born again after about 10 years of service or 11 years of service in the army. And the moment I gave my life to Christ, I saw the difference between living without God, living without Christ and living with Christ. And that gave me boldness. It also gave me confidence because the Bible says you are wonderfully and fearfully made. So no negative vibe will affect me because Amen. I've been told mm. I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. Mm -hmm. So that Amen. was one of the biggest lessons I learned. Wow. And also respect authority. Yeah. I obey the laws of the land. I try by all means to obey the laws of the land. And once you do that, because you have the fear of the Lord and you obey the laws of the land, your life will be streamlined. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful. Do you still obey the laws of the land? Yes, I Considering do. Considering that you're a general, sometimes don't yes. you get tempted? Yes, I do. Temptation is there. Uh -huh. But then you, you remember. Yeah. Uh-uh, this is a no-go area. Uh -huh. Yeah, I get tempted several times, yeah. but I always tell myself, no. Yeah, I have to lead by example. Absolutely. Fantastic. I try, I try. I'm only human. Mm. Now, let's talk about leadership. I know that is one thing that is, that is so close to your heart. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the current leadership, do you think we are on the good or rather, are we on the right path in terms of leadership? Are we talking? Could be leadership in church, leadership okay. at home, leadership in general. Okay, leadership. Mm. What is leadership? Yeah. Uh, leadership basically is having work done through others 
as you are strategically pointing them towards tomorrow. Mm. And as a leader, we always have to anticipate reading the times now, yeah. we have to anticipate what tomorrow will bring. And without strategic planning, without strategic leadership, and without um, proper resource management in your leadership, then you've lost it. And I'm talking resource management starting from human resource, mm. um, endowment resource, and also equipment and whatever other resource that you have. A leader must always look at the resources. And the most important resource of all is human. Mm. How are we treating our human resource? Right. Are we treating them as trash? Are we preparing for elevation tomorrow? Because if you don't prepare them now, you don't expect them to rise tomorrow. Yeah. So what is it that you've put in place mm. to prepare whoever it is into leadership? And this starts from home. Fantastic. The biggest leader we have is the mother and the father. So it has a ripple effect, right? It starts from Absolutely. home, church, yes. and then the nation ultimately. Yes. Mm. So what type of children are we bringing? What values are we impacting or imparting in these children? Mommy prays, daddy drinks, daddy smokes. You've already led them. Mm. Mommy moves around. Every time it's kitchen party, every time it's chilanga mm. mudilo, every other time it's whatever. <laughs> mm. And oh. there's also a mommy who is prayerful. Mommy, Bible study. Mommy, church. Mommy, whatever Choir. program at yeah. church. Exactly. Yeah. So, leadership starts from us here at home. If we don't prepare these children strategically for tomorrow, we're going to have a population that is messed up. Mm. So charity, like the old adage goes, charity begins, begins at, at home. home. I love that. So if you were to give me one lesson from your life, that's mm -hmm. for me, and I'm saying for me on behalf of my viewers, of course, mm -hmm. what would that be? Um, lead by example. Mm. Because everyone else, starting from children, and the people in the office or wherever you work, they mirror you. They mirror you. I've seen my little granddaughters with lipstick. Mm. You just leave your makeup there, she'll come out painted. They are mirroring somebody. Yeah. I'm not painted as such, but they are mirroring <laughs> somebody. I'm painted, but I'm not, I'm not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you're looking at me and saying, no, it's I am not nice. painted. <laughs> no. But then, yeah. I've got these other nieces who are yeah. painting and they are mm. mirroring. They also probably, and, and the mother doesn't paint apparently. Yeah, but they're getting but, it from somewhere. Yeah, they're getting it from somewhere. But you at home, what values are you inputting in those children? Mm. How much alcohol are you taking in their presence? How many packets of cigarettes are you smoking? And they are watching. Mm. I'll tell you a, an example. My colleague told me that she had visited a mother who was complaining about her child because the grandchildren went home. The boy was punching the girl mm. and insulting the girl while the girl was crying, I'll go to my mother, I'll go to... Mm -hmm. So the grandmother was worried and said, what's going on here? Why are you fighting? And they both said, we are not fighting, we are playing mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy. Oh. Yeah. So you get the message. Yeah. So they mirror us. So we really, because I think they work like a, like a photocopier, right? It's just absolutely copy and paste. So whatever mm -hmm. they see, they copy and then they paste. Mm -hmm. Whoa. So it's all so, about our lives at home. So now we take a short break. But before we go on break, I would like us to talk about some of the things that you love. Some of the things that most Zambians don't know about you. I'm going to put you on the spot here. <laughs> well, so when we come back, you're going to take us through some of the things that we don't know about General Puta, mm -hmm. some of the things that you love. It could be dancing, could be singing, could be, I don't know. And we also catch up with you on what you are doing, especially that you're now in retirement. Mm -hmm. We take a short break, and when we come back, we continue talking to General Puta.
To advertise on this program and enjoy amazing introductory rates, please call us on plus two six zero two one one two nine zero nine five nine or plus two six zero two one one two nine zero nine one two or plus two six zero nine five three five three eight zero 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 or send us an email at loyolazam at gmail.com. Welcome back. This is Ignite with Mwangala and we are talking to General Puta. Before we went on break, you were talking about how the children are able to mirror us. That we must be careful on some of the things that we do, especially when we are with young children. And I think that's a lesson for me. I'm very fortunate my kids are way older. So I hope they didn't mirror anything negative from me. But now let's talk about you. What are some of the things that uh, probably Zambians out there don't know about General Puta? Um, well, I love the Lord. It's very evident. Yeah, I love uh. the Lord, and uh, I sang in the church choir for about 10 years mm. when I was at North Mid Assemblies of God. I'm now at Miracle Life Family Church, and there I am a greeter. But because I'm above 60, we've just been told the 60s it shouldn't come now until the COVID-19 is over. Are you above 60? Yes, ma'am. Whoa. What are you doing? Well, to um, keep it all together. <laughs> well, I've always been athletic. I did like a lot said, of yeah. athletics at school, mm. and then I continued with the military, and uh, I work out a lot at the gym. Yeah. Um, and I eat well. Probably that's what most of us don't know about you. Yeah. Because I was trying to read up when I was preparing for this interview. I didn't see any of that written anywhere. So what is your typical day like? You say you work out. I'm thinking, okay. She is working out like I do. Yeah, I would, ah. I would wake up in the morning, have a, well, finish my water regime. and then How many liters? I do one liter in the morning. Mm. And then I take a cup of tea with lemon and honey. And I go to the gym. I've already been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I go to the gym and do a one hour workout. And then I go into the steam, sweat it out, and drink another one liter. So already I've done two liters. Whoa. And um, <laughs> I, um, I eat well. Yeah. I eat a lot of vegetables. Mm. I try to avoid red meat. Once yeah. in a while I'll do a steak, but um, I'm more on fish and uh, a lot of vegetables and fruit, mm -hmm. of course. Red wine, castle, mossy? No, no alcohol. Mm -hmm. But I do take a Cabernet Sauvignon on mm -hmm. prescription because I was having some uh, slightly elevated cholesterol levels. Mm -hmm. uh, this was when I was in uh, Liberia. This doctor prescribed oh, red really? wine, and it has to be a Cabernet Sauvignon because uh -huh. I don't know what uh, is in there which kills the the, 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 the cholesterol. So I told this doctor, I said, I don't take alcohol. Uh -huh. And he just says, that time I was a colonel, he says, Colonel, take it or die. So how many, I'm just thinking, okay, company serving you, how many glasses do you take? I take one. That's it. And usually it's once in a while. I, yeah. I really don't like it. Uh -huh. But I do take it as a prescription. Okay, is there any mm. reason why you decided not to take alcohol? Um, not to put you on the spot? I've seen how people's lives have been messed up, mm. yeah, on alcohol, and I look at it as a, a waste of money. Yeah. I would rather use that money for something that is going to bring out something. Mm. What is alcohol going to bring out? The joy, the excitement, the relaxation. Euphoria. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about some of the things that you like. You've told us that you, li you love the Lord. Mm -hmm. which is very evident from where I'm sitting. What else do you like doing? I like working out. I like step aerobics mm -hmm. and I like zoka. We dance a lot at the gym and uh, I also like hanging around with my family. Mm. I love that. And wow. then I also like sharing what I have experienced with so many other people. Mm. So I do a lot of talking to groups mm -hmm. and sometimes... Motivation? Yes, okay. motivational speaking. Mm -hmm. I've done that. 
I love that. And then I love farming. Mm. And I think basically that's, that's it. That's it. Now that you're in retirement, what is keeping you busy? Other than what you've said. Um, I'm busy with the Africa Center for Strategic Studies. Okay. We do a lot of programs mm. with them. And I'm also um, farming. Mm. I'm doing vegetables. And I'm the chairman for the Excelsa, which is the ex servicemen League of Zambia. Mm. And I'm glad that we did um, a nationwide sensitization to serving members. We've been to all the provinces, all the barracks. Mm. We've been sensitizing members on preparing to retire. So that while they are there, it's time to prepare, not when you get the last paycheck. Because mm. we've seen some of our colleagues who didn't prepare how they are, I wouldn't say living, yeah. I would say struggling. Yeah. Yeah. So to be in the military, it's an honor. And look at you dressed in that beautiful uniform. You mm. are honored. And for officers, you're being saluted. Then you retire, and then you start looking like a pauper. Mm. It's an insult to the entire military. So you have oh. to carry that even outside. And yeah. even when you're walking, people would know, no, 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 there must be something about this person. Mm. Because once you go without preparing, your shoulders will just drop. drop. And when the they military will go is high. Will, yeah, your shoulders and mm. chest out. Mm. Yeah. You still do that? Yes, I do. <laughs> I, do. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. The so, positive, yes, I do. Yeah. And, and also, look at how you served your nation. Yeah. And you must live like you're someone who put something into this land, mm. not to start looking like a pauper, begging for whatever penny to buy whatever. Mm. And, and I'm sorry to say there was a family that came, you know, our offices are at Bama Barracks. A family came asking for pallets. You call them pallets where mm -hmm. you put cases of yeah, alcohol? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They wanted some of those. And we said, why do you want those? Mm -hmm. We wanted to make a coffin for one officer, oh. a captain who died, retired. Mm -hmm. And we said, no, you can't do that. So each one of us dipped into our pockets, our handbags, yeah. and we bought just a regular coffin. That shouldn't happen. Yeah. And I've got a passion for living comfortably in retirement to an extent that we've even set up a company as Excelsa to supply goods and services to whoever and whosoever mm. so that we start generating a certain fund, a benevolent fund to help those who are in need. And some of them, it's not because they didn't try, mm. but circumstances, yeah. they just find themselves down, mm. rock bottom. So as ex-servicemen League of Zambia would want to have some benevolent fund to just help. Just to help out yeah. and, and make a difference. And, that's, and make that's a difference, important. yes. And there was someone who walked from Kanaka and Tapa, coming to Burma Barracks. Walked. Mm. He was a pilot. Oh. I almost shed tears and was asking for money, for food, and enough to take him back to Kanaka and Tapa or wherever in Chongwe. Mm. My heart bled, and I didn't have enough. Yeah. So we do need this benevolent fund mm. as ex servicemen League of Zambia to support those who might just fall by yeah. the wayside so sure. that we, we assist one way or the other. Well, we applaud you for what you're doing. Now, you've been there for 37 years. If you look back today where you are, do you think the military is where it's supposed to be? I think it has improved a lot mm -hmm. in the sense that and this is my favorite, the female has been recognized as a, as a human being, not yeah. as a woman uh. or a girl. Like I said, we have pilots in the Air Force. Mm. We have girl pilots. And we, we had one aeronautic engineer. We have um, people in the tanks, girls in the tanks. We have infantry girls. I think it's now cross-cutting. Mm. The only area that we don't have girls is um, special forces. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm yeah. sure we'll soon get there. We will, because <laughs> there are some girls who are really tough. Uh. Yeah, some girls are really tough. So what does, yeah. it, what, does it, what does one need to do to get to special forces? Is it anything unique? It, it's, it's a very tough place. It's uh. a very tough place. And I think maybe biologically, 
we are uh, not wired for that. Women are not wired for that. Okay, mm. so let's not push it. For there. now, for okay. now, it's okay. Okay, so women, as, it's okay. Let's yeah, not push it. There. Yeah, as long as yeah. we are into these others, uh, engineering, yeah. fight, uh, flying, mm -hmm. and all these artillery, because we can calculate mathematics. Yeah. Yeah. We oh. can do all those things. So mm. I think it's now cross cutting. There's nothing like this is just for females, like we were in PECO, medical, yeah. accounts, and... So we can be there anyway, that's yeah. what we are saying. Yeah, we are there. Perfect. Now you talked about singing. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of your, your favorite songs? I know you're going to tell me that it's gospel, but you must have one or two songs that kept you going. You it's know? actually gospel. <laughs> it's actually I gospel. Like that. It's actually gospel. <laughs> it's actually gospel. Because I know in the military, you know, when you're, you know, working out in the morning, there are those oh, songs. Chila like, Ilai. Hey, Chila Ilai. Okay. Yeah. Okay, ah. those songs. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I've reminded you. Yes, you have. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, we had what we're calling a DJ. Those who are in uh -huh. front and they are starting the songs uh -huh. and we are singing along. So yeah. The Chilai songs. Yeah, the Chilai Lai songs, yeah. So what, what was behind the singing? What does that do for it's you? It's a morale booster. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it actually is, works on you It does, it does, yes. So you'd sing all the way? All the way would sing. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. remember a verse of any of them? Hmm. No, I don't. <laughs> General, I don't. please remember. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> because I wasn't like the lead singer, uh -huh. so... I'll so just you sing just along. I'll sing, just along. sing along, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we sang. Okay, we're going to spare sang. you because you are the general, <laughs> so we, we can't put you on the spot just like that. Now, um, if you were on your deathbed mm -hmm. and you were given a second chance to live, mm -hmm. what what are some of the things you do differently? I'll do it again. No uh -huh. regrets. Uh huh. No regrets, but maybe yeah, I would want to know the Lord. More. At a much, much earlier age mm -hmm. than I did. Of course, we went to Sunday school with mommy. Yeah. We used to go to Reformed Church of Zambia. And, uh, but getting born again. Mm. Yeah. You would want to do it again? I would want to be born again much earlier than I was. But anyway, I have no regrets because he's a God of a second chance. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether you started at two years old yeah. or at your deathbed. Mm. As long as you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, mm. it's good. Would you still come back as a military person? Oh, yes. <laughs> the man in you answered. I mean, the whole yes came yes. up with so much energy. Yes. Why would you still want to come back I in the military? I would do it again. Um, I think service. Yeah. Service to the nation mm -hmm. Yeah, is what... Um, inspires me. Mm. I would do it again. I would. Powerful. Mm. What is your truth? What do you stand for? If I said uh, General Puta, what is that one word that should come to any of us? Integrity. Mm. I love that. Integrity. Is that how you would describe yourself? Yes. Integrity. I don't like underhand methods. I don't like bribes. Mm -hmm. I'm an open book, and this I've actually told my children. Yeah. You will not drive this car because you don't have a license. Oh, that's a general in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I have to be very careful when I'm with you. <laughs> now let's talk about um, books. Mm -hmm. I know it required you to read a lot. What is that one book? that you would say changed you? Mm. Oh, I've read so many. You have? Wow, which I one? Yeah, book point. I've read so many books. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness. I thought you'd say the Bible. Oh yes, <laughs> oh yes, it is the Bible. I thought maybe it was the uh, books. No, 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 of course yeah. it's the books, but the yeah. Bible is one yeah, of them. Yeah, the Bible is you the know, book. We, yeah, yeah, the Bible is a book because yeah. I think most of the books are derived from the Bible. If you look mm -hmm. at psychological, psychology books, most mm -hmm. of them are derived from the Bible. I think the Bible is the best psychology yeah. book that one can ever... For sure, Yeah, for sure. Now, it's I really wish, rich. It is, yeah. Mm. I wish we could stay on and on and on, but we'll have to come to the end of the show. Right. 
And like I told you earlier that the show is about uh, leaving a positive and lasting impact on people's lives, what is that one message that you would like our viewers to take away from this interview? First and foremost, you are who you are because God made you who you are. You can't change yourself in terms of the way you look, mm. but you can change your mindset. And believe in yourself, there is absolutely nothing impossible that you can't do, but also you should know your limits. You should know your capacity. I can't fly. Mm. I don't have that pilot capacity in me. Yeah. So I have to know what I'm good at and also build that. Don't copycat. Don't be Lucy. Don't be Jane, be Joyce. Mm. And you know exactly what you are capable of doing. But aim high with what you are capable of doing. Try, try, and try again until you make it. But don't copycat what you can't be. Because God has inputted in us a certain capacity. Otherwise, it would be a very boring forest. If all trees were just green, if all flowers were just yellow. So we are different. We are wired differently. And just try to discover how you are wired and maximize on that potential so that you excel and bring out the best that God inputted in you. That's all. Wow, that is so powerful. You have ignited me. You know? Uh, so what you're saying is that we must learn to be comfortable in our own skin. Absolutely. And appreciate who we are. Absolutely. There can only be one Mwangala. Absolutely. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. So the king in you has spoken to the king in me. Amen. This is perfect. Let us make every day count. We were talking to General Puta. Thank you so much for coming on Ignite. And I pray that you come back again so that we can pick up from where we we're leaving it. We've left it on a high peak and I think we need to pick it up. Amen. And take it further. Consider it done. Thank you. So there you have it. I was talking to General Puta. This has been Mwangala Chakalashi Santos. Join me for another exciting episode of Ignite with Mwangala.